All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good welcome, everyone, to this student forum for our mandatory Type V2 category consideration focused on accelerating tech and sustainability. I'm Jerry Sheehan, the Vice President and Chief Information Officer for San Diego State University. I'll be kicking off our discussion this morning, then we'll be joined by members of our community, some of them coming in via video, and also colleagues from sustainability to talk about the sustainability component of the fee. Our agenda for the brief overview that we want to give at the top of our discussion is going to be focused on a discussion from an overview perspective of the accelerating tech and sustainability fee, both the need and the approval process for the fee. Then we'll talk a little bit more in context about the student voice how the input of students help led to the idea of the recognition of the need for the fee. We'll talk about the possibilities for investment both in technology and sustainability, and then we will finalize our time together by talking about the breakdown of the fee in terms of its proposed details. So that's what we hope to accomplish together over the course of about the next 30 minutes. In addition to that, once we're done with this brief presentation, we'll be open to conversation. The first thing that we want to go over from the chair of the Campus Fee Advisory Committee is the process for this fee. So I'm going to play a brief video by Tiante Sims, who will uh, describe uh, the fee and the process for us. My name is Tiante Sims, and I am the chair of the Campus Fee Advisory Committee, also known as CFAT. SDSU is considering the establishment of a mandatory Category 2 fee to initiate new support for student and university serving technology infrastructure and sustainability initiatives. The Campus Fee Advisory Committee, comprised of a majority of students, is a key element of the alternative consultation process. At the end of this presentation, you will be asked to provide feedback to CFAC through a feedback form. This will inform them of your position on the proposed fee increases. CFAC will analyze input and after robust committee discussion, will make a recommendation to President De La Torre. President De La Torre is responsible for making the final campus decision. If approved by the president, the recommendation will move on to the CSU chancellor for final approval. Thank you for your participation in this process and go Aztecs. Thanks very much to Tiante for that overview of the process that we use for our category two mandatory fees. What we want to talk to next about is the particulars of the fee and just give you a quick overview of what they look like. First thing that we want to address is why are we looking at the accelerating tech and sustainability fee at this point in time? The first reason that we're considering this as a campus right now is to allow us to continue technology investments that were made from prior one-time investments. Those one-time investments historically came from sources like the President's Budget Allocation Committee and also some of the dollars that we saw from the federal government as a response to COVID, both the CARES Act dollars and the HERF Act dollars. So those one-time funds are now gone. If we want to continue to use some of the infrastructure and software that we've grown dependent on, we need to have additional revenue. Avenue. The second reason is to allow us to accelerate the investments in technology and sustainability, to allow us to do things that meet more of the student needs that we've heard. We'll talk about that in both of the specifics here in a second. If the fee is approved, what students would receive is reliable funding that would accelerate the investments in information technology and student-led calls for sustainability. Those impacts would happen on both our San Diego State campus and also the Imperial Valley campus. So from a student perspective, the fee levels that you're being asked to consider are really four. The first option at $249 a semester, the second at $199 a semester, the third at $174, and then finally a rejection of the fee, which would be option four at $0. So all of these, as you think about the feedback that you're going to provide, an indication of which, if any, and also your comments we'll get to at the end of this. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's dive in now to talking a little bit more about 
why in particular focused on technology, we want it to look at additional investments to accelerate what we're able to do. And this really goes back to the last three years of listening to the student body and the student body identifying the needs from a campus perspective. I should point out the results that I'm gonna share with you don't talk or address the answer about if students should pay for these, but instead just recognize that there are needs for investment. So in information technology, through a variety of different modalities, some of those surveys, some of those focus groups, some of those surveys specific to campus, others components of us participating in the national community, over the course of the last three years, we've heard from about 16,000 students. And those students over the course of the last two years have expressed really three essential needs as foundations for them to be successful in their experience at San Diego State University. The first is the need for reliable connectivity. That speaks to both the need on campus when we're moving through our wired and wireless environments and labs and classrooms outdoors, but also increasingly in the home environment where we know that we have students, particularly those who are challenged in economic need, who may not have the bandwidth to fully participate in increasingly what is a digital campus. The second thing that we've heard from students across the spectrum, both at the San Diego campus and Imperial Valley, is the need for investment in both hardware, so those would be computing devices, some of those in the lab, some of those things that can be given to students to take home, and also the software that they use in coursework. So as opposed to being charged per course fees to instead have a portfolio of software that's provided, again, the fee that we're talking about here would be the general revenue source for that. And then finally, importantly, as we've moved through the digital transformation, some would accelerate it with COVID, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment, the need for additional troubleshooting and technical support. So two quotes provided by our students, please increase the number of electronics that can be loaned at the library, my phone is too old. That speaks to the fact that for many of our students, the phone is actually the digital gateway that they have to participate. And we know the challenges that that can have for instruction. We also know from a user perspective, from a student perspective, writing term papers on a phone is challenging at best, and yet without uh, this sort of fee, they're stuck with their own device as opposed to a device that we could provide for those in economic need. Second quote from a student talking about the current experience on campus, Wi-Fi bandwidth is often insufficient when a lot of students are using the internet in a dense space, the library or the gym. Considering how much of school is still done online, faster and more reliable Wi-Fi is imperative to our learning. So it is the student voice over the course of the last two years, 16,000 students who have identified areas where they want the university to do more. One of the things that we have looked at in terms of our ability to support our students right now is the ratio that we have of information technology professionals to students. You see a table that's off uh, behind me that shows universities that are similar in complexity and size to San Diego State University, the number of IT personnel that they have, and then there's a calculated standard of the ratio of IT personnel to students. So for example, if we were to go up the road to the University of California at Irvine, their student enrollment, roughly 36,000 students. They have 348 IT personnel for a ratio of one to 104. While at San Diego State University, we have 35,730, roughly about the same size exactly as Irvine. We only have 179 staff, and that then makes our ratio one to 200. So if you actually look at the this is all IT individuals that get you that ratio. If you look at the number of staff that we have who are just providing student support right now, we really focus in on the students and the faculty staff in the library hub. And that ends up with three FTE worth of effort, so three staff who provide that support and then about 12 students. So we've got a mixture of about 15 people to support all of the campus, the graduates, the undergraduates. At Imperial Valley, there are no students right now, so they go back to their primary technical support who provide support for all of the campus. They don't have dedicated student support. What this means for our students is that at the staffing levels we have right now, they wait longer than at other universities. They get less support. They have less access to devices and software, and there are less hours available for that support. So that paradigm of sort of rationing support is where we are right now. 
One of the reasons that support is so critically important for us as we think about moving forward as a campus is what we've seen in the acceleration of our use of technology. We had a certain plateau of the use of technology prior to COVID, and then we saw as we moved into the hybrid modality, new tools that were already in existence being brought into campus and used for a lot more. Zoom as an easy case in point, where some people may have been uh, infrequently familiar with Zoom probably two years ago, but now now rely on it. One of the things that's interesting, if you look at the graph behind me, is the chart shows the amount of support that students received from the hub in the library, both when we were online, that's 1,817 support requests at peak, that month is basically August. When we returned to campus this year, the question was, would we see support go down? But instead, we saw it actually accelerate, 2,341 support requests. So I think the important thing to think about in the course of the last two years is that we've seen an acceleration of prior trends. And while our support could have been marginally adequate in the past, we now have more expectations needing more support. That is the future right now based on our reliance on technology and the way that we've infused it in instruction. Wanna next play a video from a student who's going to talk to you about the need for technology investment, again, the student not speaking to if she believes it should be from students or not. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm a senior here at SDSU. During my time here, I've used Canvas to complete all of my schoolwork and what I've really found helpful is the 24-7, 365 Canvas support. It's been really reliable and a key factor in my success at school. those new infrastructure areas that actually was only possible because of federal investment. And that was our ability to work with the vendor to provide support 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's one of the things that we would not be able to continue if this fee were not successful. So as we look at the areas for investment that from an accelerating technology standpoint we want to focus on, there are really four large areas that the fee would be invested in. And we're really talking about a co-investment strategy that takes the existing investment from the university, accelerates it with new student dollars. The first of those areas is student support, probably the most critical, again, based on our digital transformation, our reliance on technology. Fee investment would allow us to increase the number of staff and students who would be directed to provide student help. It would also allow us to continue the 24-7, 365 support that Stephanie just mentioned for our learning management system, and it would increase the number of student work experiences, allowing students to take degree knowledge that they were learning in areas like MIS, computer science, come and put that to practical use, make them more marketable in the long term. The second area for investment in the accelerating technology category is in the area of infrastructure. And the infrastructure is really focused on meeting first those bandwidth needs. So when we're talking about the network, we're talking primarily about the wireless network on campus being able to extend its coverage, make it more reliable and robust to increase the number of outdoor areas that are covered. Again, that's only possible right now because of limited one-time federal dollars. And then to provide hotspots to students who would be in economic need if they don't have sufficient bandwidth to participate in instruction, research, or outreach from their home. The other areas that this would provide additional funding for are in the areas of computer hardware and software. Those would be devices, sometimes in a lab, other times for individuals in specific and economic need to take home, and then a slew of software that has been provided through one-time funding, tools that range from in-grade testing, things like PlayPosit, uh, to other tools like Gradescope that may be used in some courses, making these more generally available. And then importantly, we want to be able to have a way that we can make sure that all of our classrooms are at the leading edge, allowing students to have the access to the technology, the recordings that they need after courses, and those would be our smart classroom investments. One of the interesting and exciting areas for the acceleration of technology is what we could do in innovation with, again, more additional investment from students. 
The first area that we would think about in terms of innovative new areas would be in finally being able to meet the student request for there to be a mobile smartphone app for SDSU. We know that students primarily live on their mobile devices, both when they're on and on campus, and there's not one place that you can go to right now these would provide us with resources to meet that need. We also see areas in which there's a great deal of student interest. For example, in eSports, we have right now a very robust student club that's focused on electronic gaming. New dollars would allow us to expand that, potentially moving into the area of intercollegiate eSports as a future goal. We also have leadership right now in areas like extended reality where additional investment would allow us to take tools and move them forward to both of our campuses. And I would emphasize that all of the investments that we're talking about happen both on the San Diego State campus, either they're a cloud-based infrastructure and they would be available on both, or they have specific components that are unique to either one of the campuses. I would say support, for example, would have support both at the San Diego State campus and also at an Imperial Valley. The final area, which is at the leading edge of thinking about the next generation of sustainability from an IT perspective, is in something that is commonly referred to as green technology. And there are a few areas right now where campus doesn't have programs that the fee would allow us to grow into. The first of those being electronic waste recycling. So as you know, many of the devices, including the laptop that we're using here, you just can't throw in the trash because of the metals and materials that are used to make it. Those become something that would be toxic just generally Generally, much like a battery, you need to think about how you recycle the components. This would allow us to develop a program not only for campus, but also in terms of folks being able to bring their own devices. In other areas for potential green technology investments, we know in sort of the power consumed world that we are in right now that it's critical to have devices that are charged. New dollars would allow us to look at renewable charging stations on campus where students would be able to use alternative sources to fossil fuels to charge. And then finally, we know that the other important area that students have expressed interest in is both a more robust way of printing on campus and then printing with more recyclable paper. So this would move in the infrastructure that would allow us to do that. So the four areas, again, for accelerating technology support, student support, infrastructure, innovation, and green tech both of those happening at the San Diego and the Imperial Valley campus. I'm next going to turn things over to my colleague, Eric Hansen, who will introduce himself to talk about sustainability. Thank you very much, Jerry. So again, my name is Eric Hansen. I'm the Associate Vice President for Business Operations and the new uh, Office of Energy and Sustainability reports to me. While not necessarily identifying funding sources, SDSU students have been sharing their input regarding energy and sustainability needs for a number of years and in a number of ways. Our shared governance standing committees, such as the University Senate Sustainability Committee, a number of our ad hoc committees, such as our climate action planning and our strategic planning activities committees, through AS, Green Love, and RHA leadership, and through other organizations. One of the ways that the students have shared their their views started in 2018 through the annual student climate strike in conjunction with the global climate strike led by Fridays for Futures. In the most recent climate strike in 2021, of the eight requests identified, the first four are actively being pursued by the university. The bottom three are much more resource dependent. Next slide, please. Similar to the quotes shared by Jerry earlier, we wanted to capture some of the qualitative input that we received during our survey this last fall. A student from the SDSU Imperial Valley campus shared, for me personally, an increase in transportation subsidies or let alone some transportation available would be great, especially being offered at not only various times, but able for pickups at nearby towns like El Centro, Brawley, Imperial, and so on. A student from the San Diego campus shared, more green energy and sustainable energy management is a must if we further, as we further weather the storm of the climate catastrophe. Having a staff person in charge of this area will do the institution service for now and beyond. And finally, another student from the San Diego campus shared, please invest in having existing buildings on campus be LEED certified, procuring local food and post-consumer recycled materials. Next slide, please. Also from the fall survey, there appears to be a strong agreement in the importance of the proposed areas. Specifically, 79% of the students indicated investing in electricity conservation technologies as important or very important. 
78% of thought enhancing infrastructure enhancements was important or very important. 75% for increasing mass transportation subsidies. 70% for increasing sustainability related events, activities, and educational programs. And then 68% of the respondents indicated that increasing energy and sustainability support staffing was important or very important. Again, as stated earlier, with all of this input, the students were not necessarily identifying funding sources. Next slide, please. We also want to provide some context that our aspirations to address our climate impacts have been part of the SDSU intentions for quite a while. In March 2014, San Diego State University's then president, Elliot Hirschman, signed Second Nature's American College and University President's climate commitment to confirm the university's commitment to sustainability. This required the SDSU to develop a climate action plan to achieve carbon neutrality. In April 2017, President Hirschman approved our initial climate action plan committing to operational carbon neutrality by 2040 and then full campus carbon neutrality by 2050. And then most recently in our strategic planning efforts of 2020, seven of the activities identified had something to do with sustainability efforts. Three of them with regard to organizational structure for energy and sustainability, the development of principles to guide our work and updating our climate action plan. The other four all had something to do with providing mass or carbon reducing transportation of some sort. Next slide, please. As we've, as we've already indicated, there's a lot of work that's have already been committed by the university that we wanna leverage or accelerate progress. Some of these specific examples include our new Office of Energy and Sustainability with two full-time staff and five student interns started this last semester. The initiation of a carbon neutrality feasibility study to create pathways for cost uh, estimates to, and, and pathways and cost estimates to get to carbon neutrality by 2030. The negotiation of an agreement to provide electric vehicle charging stations in Mission Valley, San Diego, Imperial Valley campuses. And then the development of a composting pilot with AS leadership. And then finally, the solicitation of a request for proposal or RFP in the winter of 2021 for, solar, for a solar company to install solar panels on our roofs and parking structures. Unfortunately, this failed due to the proposed cost being higher than our most expensive procured power. Next slide, please. So similar to the technology area that Jerry provided, where would we make our investments if the fee was approved? First, we would look at the transportation area. This might, um, might include things like increased subsidies for SDSU MTS trolley or bus passes, expansion of the shuttle between San Diego and Prairie Valley campuses, creation of a shuttle between Calexico and Brawley campuses, and other carbon reducing transportation initiatives. The next area are in the areas of programs, activities, and events. This could include initiatives such as increasing our program funds, increasing our literacy outreach, creating a student micro grant for energy and sustainability, where students were, were provided seed money for innovative ideas, and then perhaps the establishment of a sustainability center. The next is expanding our support staff. In the strategic planning recommendations, it had been suggested that we would have up to three to four additional full-time staff with, the, with additional student support. These full-time staff could be energy and utility infrastructure project managers to help focus and accelerate our capital projects, a zero waste coordinator, and a sustainability coordinator. And then our final area of focus is the energy in sustainability infrastructure. We will need to identify additional resources to make the investments needed to expand our efforts to reduce our dependency on natural gas and the public utilities, and to meet our carbon neutrality goals that we have articulated. So examples of this investment could, could how these could be utilized are offsets to our solar panel cough differentials, battery installations, lead LED lighting upgrade projects, and then energy and inefficiency and conversion projects, upgrading our systems from greenhouse gas to electrification. Next slide, please. Here's, uh, we're gonna have Shante speaking on her thoughts on carbon reducing transportation needs. Hi, my name is Shante. I'm a senior here at SCSU and having commuted for the past four years, I've seen the great impact commuting has on our environment. I believe that having other transportation options would be great for our sustainability efforts. Bruce Oppelyard, who is one of the faculty in the School of Public Affairs, has conducted a transportation study for us for several years. He has found that our commuter traffic is the second largest source of carbon produced by the campus community. 
His research has also indicated that we could motivate many more students to use mass transit and thereby dramatically reduce our carbon footprint if we could provide a larger subsidy for students buying a, a universal transit pass. Next slide, please. Now we move to the revenue distribution. There are four options to choose from, as Jerry shared earlier, with anticipated revenue in e each. So option one, the, the anticipated revenue would be $18 million a year. Option two, anticipated revenue annually would be $14 million a year. Option three would be 12 million, and then no, no dollars for option four. With regard to how the fee would be allocated, the plan is for 67% of the fee to be to address the technology needs, 30% to address the energy sustainability needs, and 3% for designated for return to aid. The return to aid portion can help offset the impact of this fee to support students who are experiencing financial hardship. Next slide, please. Now, Lexo, who is a representative of the CFAC committee, will now present how you can share your input today. Hello, everyone. My name is Lexo, and I'm a student representative from the Associated Students Board of Directors on the Campus Fee Advisory Committee. Today, I wanted to explain the process of the student voice during the alternative consultation process. Shared governance, the process of gaining student input for school-wide decisions, will be upheld at all times. If the fee is passed, the committee will continue to engage with students at the San Diego and Imperial Valley campuses on these issues to make sure that the student voice is central during these conversations. So how can students provide this input? That would be through the feedback forms to hear all of your voices. There is a paper copy that needs to be filled out within an hour of attending the presentation. Filling out this form is a critical part of the process. Please remember that there are four options to choose from and students can provide any written comments on the back of the form. This concludes our formal presentation. We certainly thank you for your attention. Look forward to your questions. We will be circulating the feedback form. You can make comments on that starting now or again within the next hour for those to be turned in. Thank you very much and we're open to any questions.